By now, we're well aware that getting used to GA4 has definitely been an adjustment. There's many things that are different between Universal Analytics and GA4, and importing cost data is no exception. There's a big difference in how we have to import cost data now with GA4. So in this video, we're gonna cover what is mandatory now with the new process, and then we'll go over how to get the data that is needed from other channels and get it back into GA4. I'm starting on Google's campaign URL builder for a very specific reason. That is because the way that we import cost data has definitely changed from Universal Analytics to GA4. I'm highlighting this field here, campaign ID. That is because this parameter is now a requirement in order to import anything into GA4, which means if you wanna use the data import feature within GA4, you must start including the campaign ID parameter. I already have some examples filled in, but if we scroll down, that is going to be this highlighted section here. UTM underscore ID equals and whatever your campaign ID is. It must be added to your URLs, and if you've never had it in your URLs before, you cannot retroactively add it to get historical information into GA4. So if you manually tag all of your URLs, start adding in a campaign ID. If you use tracking templates, like what we talk about in this video here, update your tracking templates to also start including campaign ID if you do want to start looking at importing any data into GA4. So make this the very first step. Here's the link on the screen for Google's help section on importing cost data. I know it wasn't on the screen too long, but don't worry, it's in the description too. Eventually on this page, if you keep scrolling down, there's a link to the template. And here's where we can download the CSV import template for cost data. If you click on it, the file will automatically download to your device. It's not gonna open up a different page. So if we click it, here's what the template's gonna look like. I blew it up so it's easier to see. The first five columns, campaign ID, campaign name, source, medium, and the date are mandatory. You must include those five columns. The last three, impressions, clicks, and cost, are optional for a data import. But we're talking about importing cost data, so of course, you're going to want to include the cost. Notice that it is date, so whenever we are pulling the cost report from whatever other channel we're using, it has to be at the individual day level. And then everything from columns A through D, these first four here, have to match the parameters that you have included within the URLs. If one thing is off, the data cannot be matched, and your report could either error out, or it just won't be included within GA4. Yes, you pretty much need to be perfect here. So for this video, I'm only gonna go through one channel. I'm gonna use Microsoft Ads. But even though I can only go through one example, hopefully you get a better understanding of how this process works so you can pull this information right here for whatever other channel you may be using. So let's go into Microsoft Ads. Most other ad platforms have some sort of reporting. Microsoft does make it easy. If I click on reports, oh, what do you know? I already have this specific report created. It's a campaign by date report. And look, it's got campaign ID, the campaign name, which I have to blur them out. This is an actual client account. There's the date, impressions, clicks, and spend. You're gonna say source and medium is missing. Yes, it is, but that's easy enough to add myself. For whatever reason, if you are curious on how to do this within Microsoft, if you click on reports, just go to default reports, then performance, then click on campaign, and then in this little symbol here, you can customize the columns and only include the ones that we need. So now let's download this information and then we'll just hop right into a formatted file and I'll walk through what the end result should look like. So here I'm gonna just download the CSV and then we can move on. Heading back to the same Google help page about cost import data, right above the link where we downloaded the template, they give you an example of what it should look like as well as the formatting. Right? Notice the cost, no currency symbol. It must include two decimal places. Clicks, no decimal places, and no commas. Impressions, no decimal places, no commas. And the date must be formatted this way. Four characters for the year, dash, two characters for the month, dash, two characters for the day. Let's look at my report. No currency symbols. This is a smaller account, so I don't have to worry about commas in this case. It's not even pulling a full month. And here's how I have the date sorted. So within like the three weeks that we have pulled, I have my CSV set. I left the headers exactly the way that they are from when I downloaded the template. Do not change the header names. If you change the header names, the file will get rejected. It will not upload. Now, let's go into GA4 and I'll show you where and how to upload this file. To find the data import section within GA4, in the lower left, click on the gear. That's your admin. And then it's easy enough to see the section for data import. Let's go ahead, create a new data source. The default option is the one we want, cost data, but a name is mandatory, so let me just add something. 
I know it's not including the full month. I'll name it this on purpose. And then since I downloaded the CSV template manually, it's just the way I'm used to. That's the option that we need, but you do have an SFTP option. I apologize. That's something I am not familiar with on how to import cost data via SFTP. So you're going to have to research that one on your own, but let's click upload CSV. There's the file that I want. And then up here, we need to click next. The next step will be mapping the columns within your CSV to the analytics field. We see the check boxes here. The five options that I told you are mandatory. I cannot uncheck them, but I can check the three additional options of cost, clicks, and impressions. Then for each row, let's go up top to campaign ID. There's this arrow for a dropdown. You just have to match it with the column that was in your file. Let's do source. It was Bing. Let's do medium. It's PPC. And then let me snap my fingers and finish the rest of these. Once you have mapped all of your columns, we can go ahead and click import. Now we see that the status is uploading. It can take a minute or two, but if you just stay on the screen, the status will automatically refresh once it's ready. So we'll just wait. And the green check mark is what you want to see. You'll get a red exclamation point if you have errors within your upload. Then you have to go back, check the file, make your corrections, and then you can re-upload. So this import now button here, if you click on it, that's how you can give Google a new file once you've made corrections or include or update additional information. In my case, I might want to do it. If I label this report all of December 2023 and I'm importing it before the month is completed, I may want to go back and actually include the entire month. It's just one example, but you get it. Now, just because the upload worked, there's still another thing you need to confirm. And to do that, click on this little right arrow here. And this match rate is the second number you want to confirm. If you're seeing 0% as a match rate, my guess is there's something off with your campaign ID. This early into GA4, that seems to be the most common issue. You can look at campaign ID, source, medium within GA4, make sure what's showing up currently within GA4 matches what you've included in your report. Now, if you're wondering why my match rate is low, easy explanation here. We did not have campaign ID included the entire month of December. I did that on purpose, just so I can show you this. Cause again, we cannot go and retroactively add it when people have already clicked on it in the days past. So even though I included December so far, only about a week or so of our traffic throughout the entire month actually has all of the necessary parameters included. As time goes on, I can always update this report, but go try to get as close to 100% as possible. And remember, Besides just your ad URLs, look at all of your ad extension URLs too. If you're getting clicks from those and you're not adding a campaign ID to it, sometimes your ad extensions have totally different parameters attached to them. Make sure those are updated too. Now let's look at where we can view the cost information once it's uploaded. But before we do that, I will warn you, it could take up to 48 hours for this information to start showing up within GA4. So since I just did it, it's gonna pull zeros for me. I'm gonna X out of this. And then I'm going to highlight reports. If we go to acquisition, you will see a report for non-Google cost. If I scroll down a little bit, here you will see ads cost. Again, nothing's going to be in here, but in a couple days we should start seeing some information here. If you do go ahead and create any of your custom reports, your non-Google cost options will start showing up in your custom reports as well. One last thing, heading back to the import cost data help section. Underneath the template link, you can expand this other option. And Google does give some resources and help on how you can export the information from other channels. There's Facebook, Firebase, LinkedIn, talks about Microsoft, Twitter, and Verizon. So if you use any of those channels, feel free to use this as another resource. Any of the other ad platforms, and there's a lot of them that clearly are not included in this help section, do the best you can, but remember the five mandatory columns. And that is the new process for importing cost data into GA4. To me, it really comes down to adding the campaign ID. It's something that I've honestly have never really included in any of my previous ad parameters. So now we have to adjust and update our URL tracking. If you have any other questions on how cost import data works within Google, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.